Wow, December is almost here. Sometimes it's the best month of the year and I've got my fingers crossed. Hi folks, it's Falcon today on Game Ranks. New games you gotta play in December 2019. Starting off at number 10 is Terminator Resistance. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, this game's proven to not really be a critic favorite, but here's the problem with that. This is a game game. It's not trying to push the boundaries, it's trying to give you a fun experience through a licensed property, and it totally succeeds at it. Is it perfect the whole way through? No, sometimes it lags a bit, but this is kind of what we're talking about when we say the game industry has tried to lead people away from single-player experiences to their detriment. What we get here is a game about the war with the machines, it's post-Judgment Day, and it's authentic. It brings in the old-school lore. As you know, timelines are very inconsistent in the Terminator franchise. It basically follows the originals. I mean, it's a mid-tier shooter, a double-A game, if you will. And I think this kind of game gets way too much flack from critics for not being, like, everything. I think for the most part, it's exactly what it sets out to be, and I honestly wish more games were like this. Terminator Resistance is already out on PC, but we listed it as a December game because it's coming to PS4 and Xbox One December 10th. Moving on to number nine is Boneworks, an experimental first-person physics shooter puzzle game made for VR that actually looks really sweet. Like, what it looks like is basically what you say if an FPS was a VR game. Up until now, we really haven't seen anything quite this extensive, I think. You're really able to interact with the environments on a high scale, and I think that's really what sets it apart from a lot of stuff. I mean, not that Pistol Whip VR is not cool, it's very cool, but Boneworks looks like it sort of continues the spirit of Half-Life in some ways, developing physics puzzle technology as well as giving you a good first-person shooter. The story puts you against a corporation's AI, but really the charm of this game is the gameplay. What we've seen, I cannot wait to experience, and I hope you're excited to try out Boneworks as well if you got VR. It's hitting on Steam December 10th. Moving on to number eight, both Halo Reach and Halo the Master Chief Collection are hitting on PC December 3rd. Halo Reach will also be hitting Xbox One on December 3rd. So in every way, the Master Chief Collection is as good as you get as far as all of the games. That actually comes with Halo Reach, as well as Halo Combat Evolved, Halo 2, Halo 3, Halo 3 ODST, and Halo 4. And it's 40 bucks, but if you're just wanting Halo Reach on its own, it's nine. These are absolutely reasonable prices for the package you get. It's the most updated versions of the games. You get the anniversary editions of Halo 1 and 2, for instance, in the Master Chief Collection. Like when this was announced, people were sending pizza to the 343 Industries offices because frankly, it's a good collection. People want it for PC really bad and it's pretty awesome that it's finally landing there. Halo Master Chief Collection and Halo Reach will be hitting PC. Halo Reach will be hitting PC and Xbox One as well as a standalone on December 3rd. Moving on to number seven, it's Darksiders Genesis, a top-down hack and slash with a lot of fun gun action, which is actually considered a spin-off slash prequel in which Strife, the fourth horseman of the apocalypse, will team up with War, another horseman of the apocalypse, to wipe out their kind at the behest of the council. It's a little more complicated than that, obviously, but what we're getting is what looks to be an incredibly good top-down setup to all the events of the Darksiders series which by the way is typically done through third person. However, the gameplay of this doesn't look drastically different to me. From what it looks like, it seems a lot like it leans into the more traditional hack and slash stuff while not abandoning the kinds of attacks and big chaos that you can cause in a Darksiders game. And frankly, I'm really excited to play it. Darksiders Genesis is coming to PC and Stadia on December 5th. Moving on to number six, Life is Strange 2 Episode 5, as well as the full collector's edition of physical release as well as digital of episodes one through five is a full game. Life is Strange 2, of course, has been quite a bit bigger in scale. They started changing locations early in the season. There's a travel element to this series that likely wasn't possible in the first, not only due to the story they were telling, but most likely other reasons as well, maybe budgetary, maybe otherwise. These are obviously narrative-driven games, so I don't really want to give away too much while describing it, but despite being a very different story from the first, it's retained a lot of the charm of the first. 
all the way down to the semi-awkward dialogue that sometimes will confuse you coming out of teenagers' mouths. It's fun to see kids develop supernatural powers, though. I mean, that's always a good basis for a story. We've gotten a totally different type of power in this, and the other four episodes have not pulled any punches, at least, towards our guts. I expect episode 5 should be quite good. When Life is Strange 2 Episode 5 and Life is Strange 2 Collector's Edition hit on PC, PS4, and Xbox One December 3rd. Moving on to number 5, Detroit Become Human is actually hitting the PC this month. And that's good because Detroit Become Human is a very interesting game. Now, is it flawless? No, not at all. But to call it ambitious would be a massive understatement. Now again, this is a narrative-driven game, and most narrative-driven games put an emphasis on choice. However, Detroit Become Human puts a much bigger emphasis on it. Small choices can have big effects, stuff that you would never expect in a million years. And when you're talking about the story of a bunch of androids basically searching for a reason to exist, a justification, to lean so far into choice is probably the best storytelling decision. I think really the best part about the game is just that at almost every point, it feels believable. And when you're trying to immerse yourself in a story that is addressing the nature of human existence, that's probably one of the bigger concerns. So yeah, I'm not gonna call it flawless or anything. It does have its, its let's say, voice acting problems from time to time. But I would say that Detroit Become Human is more than worth a spin when it hits on PC December 12th. Moving on to number four, it's Arise, a simple story. The story of a dead man recounting the events of his life as he's in limbo between life and the afterlife. Simple setup, time-based platformer in execution. Now, as a platformer fan, this is something that I'm actually quite a bit looking forward to. I liked Braid and its time mechanic, and I don't think that this is entirely dissimilar from what I've seen visually, except I would say it maybe looks a little more streamlined than Braid, which I think will both work as an advantage and a disadvantage. The platforming to me looks like mid-90s platforming, but what stands out is there's stuff like a level where the actual level happens over the course of 12 seconds and you have to pause, rewind, and stop time to platform through falling stuff that you have to position by controlling time. To me, this stuff looks really fun and innovative, and it's also just gorgeous to look at. It's got a lot of color, it's got a nice simple aesthetic, and I will definitely be playing Arise a Simple Story when it hits PS4, Xbox, and PC on December 3rd. And at number three, Jurassic World Evolution Return to Jurassic Park DLC. If you're aware Jurassic World Evolution is a business sim, the whole point is constructing and managing a dinosaur park, and Return to Jurassic Park actually is a new scenario for it in which following the events of the film, that is to say 1993's Jurassic Park, the original, you return to Jurassic Park and work to reclaim the park from the dinosaurs, rebuild it, and essentially turn it into your ideal Jurassic World evolution business sim type location. What's cool is the actual film cast, Sam Neill, Laura Dern, and Jeff Goldblum all reprise their roles, as well as others. And ultimately, in some ways, it's actually a bit of a sequel to the original film. Not necessarily the kind of sequel Jurassic Park 2 was, but something interesting and cool to see nonetheless. Jurassic World Evolution Return to Jurassic Park will be hitting PC December 10th. At number two, we have MechWarrior 5 Mercenaries, which looks to continue the semi-simulation elements. Obviously, mechs are not real, at least not mechs like this, but does look a little to me like they've sped up and simplified the action a little bit, adding destructible environments, which yes, thank you very much, that's a great idea for MechWarrior, and overall have just brought it into this century. It's been a long time since we've seen a MechWarrior game, and they are old. There's no other way to put it. However, this looks like a fresh experience without changing too far away from what Mech Warrior 2 and 3, in my opinion, the best entries of the series, really were. I obviously hope it pans out that way. I've been excited since they've announced a new Mech Warrior game, and I'll be for sure hitting Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries up when it hits on PC December 10th. And finally at number one, one that I'm particularly excited about, Phoenix Point, which is a spiritual successor to the XCOM series created by Snapshot Games, the original creator Julian Gollops, new company. 
And in a lot of ways, the spiritual successor to XCOM sounds very good. It also looks very pretty. It is an update on the XCOM formula, which drops us in the midst of a war between a bunch of different factions, both human and alien alike, and introduces mutating aliens that evolve. It will be coming next year to the PlayStation, but Phoenix Point will be hitting PC and Xbox One December 3rd. Couple of quick bonus games for you, Call of Juarez Gunslinger is heading to the Switch, which is quite fun, a game I really enjoyed when it came out back in 2013. Basically a western themed first person shooter that really just has a ton of personality and great level design. That's hitting Switch December 10th. Also hitting Switch in December is Alien Isolation, which is probably the best game from the Alien franchise, period. It's a game that does survival horror so well, and just creates this atmosphere that is so immersive and authentic to the world established in the original film. Alien Isolation's hitting Switch on December 5th. And finally, Wadham, the new game from the Katamari Damacy creator, is basically a very goofy action game that involves making friends with everything from trees to toilets. Katamari Damacy is a series that just has given us so many good things. I'm eager to try a new idea from the creator. Wadham is hitting Windows and PlayStation 4 December 17th. What are you going to play in December? Leave us a comment, let us know what you think, and if you like this video, please click like. If you're if you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.